back and thanks for joining me today. Today we are going to look at the last instrument in my little series here and it is called the oboe. Now the oboe is a woodwind instrument and it's a double reed instrument and I'm going to explain what that is in just a minute. But I am going to say of all the instruments I've shown you, just like the French horn, the oboe isn't really an instrument that I would suggest starting off with in a band setting. The oboe is an instrument that if you've had a lot of success on the clarinet or the flute or the saxophone and you think, you know, I really need a challenge, I'm, I'm bored, I need a challenge, then the oboe is definitely something up your alley because it is a challenge. <laughs> so with that being said, let's continue on to the oboe. So the oboe is a woodwind instrument and it is called a double reed instrument. Now it's a double reed because unlike the clarinet, that had the single reed, that just little piece of bamboo that I had in my mouth. This actually functions with two reeds, not just one. And I'm actually, I'll bring it up close to you so you can see. So this right now is my oboe reed. And if you look really hard, it's hard to see. There's a reed on this side and a reed on that side. And so that's why they call it a double reed because there's two reeds together in one mouthpiece. Now, what's great about this is there's, there's no ligature that I have to tighten. There's just a little piece of metal there and that's already done for me. Um, so really the only thing I need to do is, is keep this moist. So just putting it in your mouth. Um, I would put it in my mouth a little bit more but I wanna show you and talk a little bit more about this. So for now I'll put it down. Um, so that's why it's called a double reed instrument. Now the oboe looks very similar to the clarinet, but it's a little different, okay? Um, it is generally made out of either wood or plastic. The plastic ones are probably what you're going to see in a classroom setting because it's, it's a little bit cheaper and more common. So what I've got here right now is I've got one part of the oboe. It's got the little thumb hook at the back just like the clarinet and that's why it's kind of a good uh, part to start out with because everything attaches to this main area. So I've got my, my middle part of my oboe and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the neck joint out here and I know it's the neck joint because it's got my little register key here and Really, there's, there's only three parts to it all together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it in, trying to be very gentle and not bend the keys as I'm putting it in. And now, just like the clarinet, you wanna make sure you line up the bars. There's a bar here that you wanna line up, and there's a bar here that you wanna line up. So I think I've got those lined up pretty, pretty well, so I'm gonna just leave it. And then I'm gonna grab the bell. Now the bell looks like this. Unlike the clarinet bell, you can see that there's actually a key right here. And so because of that, lining it up is also very important. So I'm gonna line it up there and once again, I'll show you where that bar is. Lined up that bar. And it's important because if you don't line them up and you have to press that, that key at some point, you're not gonna be able to Play correctly because if the if the bar isn't lined up then the hole doesn't get covered or uncovered how you need it to be and then you won't get that sound so I mean putting the instrument together unlike the clarinet is pretty simple I mean there's only three main parts so you're really not having to think too hard about where everything goes um, but you really ought to make sure things are lined up there the very last part that you put on is this double reed now what's really cool about the double reed is you can actually make a noise on just the reed alone. Um, the saxophone and the clarinet, you can make a, a noise with just the mouthpiece, but if the reed wasn't on the mouthpiece, there's no noise to be had. Whereas this, I can make a sound using just the reed. So, as I'm gonna get my reed wet here, it will hopefully show you, here we go. A very elegant noise. <laughs> All right, so after that, there's only one place left to put the reed, and that's just at the top there. So I will put the reed on the top. Here's the oboe. So now the oboe is all put together. Now, um, a little bit 
of information about the oboe. Um, so once again, it is called a double reed instrument, uh, just because of this of this reed that you see there. Um, it is part of the woodwind family. If you are an oboe player, you are also called an oboist, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people know the oboe when they see it in an orchestra, because when an orchestra has to tune, it's usually the oboe player that plays an A, and the whole orchestra will tune to the oboe, which is really, which is really neat. So if you didn't know that before, it's definitely a, a cool fact about the oboe. Um, also, the oboe can be found in many settings. Yes, it can be found in an orchestra. It can be a good um, solo instrument. It can be found in concert band or in chamber ensembles. Um, this thing is, is also not a new instrument. I mean, we had a relatively recent date with the saxophone. It was somewhere in the 1800s. This is one of the older instruments. It was actually around um, even before the 1700s, but before the 1700s, actually before 1770, it wasn't called the oboe, it was called the hoboy. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> and um, there's a couple different members of the oboe family. Uh, just like there's different sizes of saxophones and clarinets, there's also different sizes of oboes, okay? And one such instrument is called the hecklephone. And that is really cool. It's a lot bigger than the oboe. I don't have one with me, but I have a picture of one because why wouldn't you want to see a hecklephone? So this is what a hecklephone looks like. You can see it still has the double reed, um, but it kind of almost looks like a, a, a snake charmer because of the little circle on the bottom there. Really cool looking instrument um, in the oboe family. So the hecklephone. So. There you go, your fun fact of the day there. All right, so now I'm going to try to play just a little something on the oboe. Um, I used to play oboe back when I was in high school. Um, it's been many years since I've played the oboe and in case you <laughs> in case you didn't notice with the A, I, I don't sound as, as polished as I used to. So here we go, I'm gonna try to play a little bit on the oboe. again that's the oboe um, I don't recommend this as a good starting instrument because it's not <laughs> definitely try something like a flute or a clarinet or a saxophone if woodwind is something that interests you but if you find that you're getting bored and you're really really good at that and your teacher say you know what I think you're ready for the challenge an oboe is a great next step thank you very much for joining me today I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time stay safe bye